Hello. Hey, thanks for um, you know inviting me for this um, to this uh, wonderful conference. Um, I'm going to talk about BBRX. Uh, basically, um, we are uh, we actually have extended the BBR to do a um, little little better control of the um, the uh, what is it the uh, the bottleneck um, queuing delay. So um, that's basically what I'm going to actually you know present today. So the objectives are like, you know, it seems like BBR is going to be uh, promising. Uh, it's actually promising next gen TCP congestion avoidance candidate, but, uh, you know, still has a room for uh, performance improvement, um, especially for a better, better, uh, better management of bottleneck queuing delay. Um, so, and uh, when I was actually working on congestion management uh, for uh, wireless um, communications, um, you know, usually um, everybody wants to actually have minimum delay, um, and that's the first objective, and then want to, uh, you know, uh, achieve the maximum um, throughput. But, you know, in our case, it was slightly different. Um, so, because, you know, as a wireless provider, we always wanted to um, say, oh, our, um, uh, what is it, the speed of our network is the fastest. Um, and then they actually worry about um, uh, the delay. So uh, I was actually seeking to um, seeking for a uh, mechanism so that I can, um, you know, uh, manage the uh, the queuing delay better from the source perspective. Um, so then, uh, basically, um, then um, so when uh, we need to actually deploy a congestion, uh, you know, management uh, algorithm. Basically, um, we are trying to actually practically deploy um, learning techniques to ensure the optimal TCP performance all the time. I mean, that was another aspect of it. So basically, we don't. We I, I was actually scared to introduce like learning algorithm within the kernel, but you know, um, we try to actually figure out, hey, how can we actually use a learning algorithm um, in the user space and just you know slowly configure the um, uh, the, the condition parameters so that. Uh, we can actually achieve the best, uh, you know, TCP performance uh, in uh, in our um, um, the RAN radio access network. So basically, that was uh, you know another objective that we were um, looking at. Okay, so um, so the theory behind the uh, the BBRX. Basically, we um, introduced the PI controller into BBR. Um, when I actually saw the BBR from the first time, say uh, uh, it was actually um, estimating the, um, the bandwidth. And that actually reminds me of my old work like, you know, 20 something years ago. Uh, I actually was working on a rate-based PI controller for uh, active queue management. So active queue management means like, you know, the, uh, the congested router actually come, come up with um, uh, with the marking probability, uh, congestion notification probability, and with that probability, it either um, marks or drops the packet so that um, the, the AIMD-based uh, you know, TCP source can adjust its rate, and it's an indirect control uh, rather than directly controlling um, uh, the TCP um, sender. So, um, and I was actually looking at the, um, the PI controller um, uh, parameter configuration uh, for my um, schoolwork. So basically, uh, this is this algorithm is actually very simple. So P is actually uh, the um, the the um, the ECN um, the congestion notification probability, and basically congestion notification probability will be actually increased by um, uh, my um, C a gamma C, which is which is basically um, my target uh, bandwidth. Um, for this app box, so times the um, the delta gamma c is basically how many packets to actually deliver uh, you know, that I want, um, and basically uh, what I can actually do, and then minus like you know what is what is the uh, the number of bytes I actually received this um, this app box, and minus um, q zero is actually my target q, um, and basically the q length, and then the q is basically um, um, the current q length that I actually see. And so this is basically a basic, uh, you know, PI control algorithm. So uh, when I'm actually, uh, while I'm actually trying to move this to the traffic source, the TCP, basically um, I don't really need, uh, you know, packet 
um, the congestion notification probability. So I'm using the same logic, but in term, in, instead of trying to find like, you know, P, I'm just gonna use like, you know, number of bytes that I need to send for this epoch. So I just replace the P with the Bs. Then, um, basically I'm, uh, I wanna actually, you know, work with the rate. So I divided, uh, you know, both end by um, delta, the epoch size which will actually give, give you the R. And if you actually, um, you know, on the right side, if you um, um, rewrite, um, then it actually comes, becomes like, you know, one minus alpha times R plus, uh, you know, um, alpha times gamma C. So basically this term um, is more like an, a um, weighted average. And it actually becomes, I can actually just rewrite as a, you know, gamma C. Uh, because anyway, it's estimation of the, uh, you know, the bandwidth. And, um, and basically, uh, and also the Q minus Q zero, uh, if you actually divide it by C, then it actually becomes the, uh, the queuing delay. So, and, um, so the, um, the, the PI control algorithm uh, becomes just as simple as this. But the, um, the gotcha here is I don't know the queuing delay, okay? So how do I actually estimate the queuing delay? Um, Basically, um, the measured RTT minus the uh, R0, which is actually minimum RTT, would be a, a good estimate of D minus D0. But um, we're probably gonna have estimation noise here um, because um, I'm actually measuring the, um, the D minus D0 um, uh, with R minus R0 at the source, um, okay? So, um, but I mean, if you actually look at this, this is actually um, the control function that actually used by the ABC um, at the, um, the ABC switch. So I'm actually um, going to use the same control function that um, ABC uses um, into um, uh, BBR. And if you look at this, uh, BBR is uh, basically, uh, so the BBR is basically, if you actually set the, uh, the beta equals to zero and gamma equals to one, then basically it becomes a BBR. So, um, so I mean, uh, the control function that I'm just rewriting the R zero to, um, you know, K divided by four times R mean, so that I just want to make it discrete so that if I want to increase the, um, the RTT, my target RTT, I just need to increase the, uh, the K from four to five or six or um, something like that. So, um, so this is exactly the control function that um, and I've implemented into the BBR. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So I just want to say that BBR is a special case of BBRX where gamma equals to one and beta equals to zero. <clears throat> okay. So um, code added. So the red line is actually what I added to the uh, the BBR main function. Um, so, so this is, so the BBR main function is actually called every ACK um, event. And what it does is actually um, estimate the bandwidth and then create the model and stuff like that and then get the bandwidth. And uh, if the red line is not there, then it just set the pacing rate to the uh, you know, bandwidth. But I just call uh, my function, just call like BBRX target bandwidth. Um, and that is going to, um, just implement the, um, what is it, the PI logic based on the, um, the, the RTT, um, the instant RTT value available um, in the, um, the rate sample. Basically, it's as simple as that. Okay, um, so um, the, uh, what I did was uh, I used the baseline, I mean the uh, Linux 4.15.18, uh, um, and in order to actually uh, add a little more um, you know, variables, I had to uh, increase the size of the, uh, the private, um, the control, um, the CA uh, structure uh, from 88 to 104. Um, and also, um, I added like, you know, a little more TCP um, information, uh, BBRX information to the, uh, the CC info that I'm gonna actually talk about a little later. Okay, so now, the problem is, I just throw in a, a PI controller. So how do I actually configure this thing? Um, that is actually um, usually um, when I was in school, people just stopped here 
um, and then just say, hey, uh, this control, uh, I actually added, uh, you know, introduced this controller, it works great on this environment, and then basically that was it. But I actually uh, had to go a little beyond that because, you know, I, I was, um, I, I need to actually, uh, you know, do, um, I need to um, implement this thing for carriers, right? So I actually look into like, you know, how can I actually come up with a better, um, you know, um, parameters. So basically the tar target utilization gamma is actually easy. Uh, just set to one. I mean, setting to one doesn't really mean like, you know, I, I, I don't really, um, I really go against the uh, the queuing theory, but you know, anyway, it's estimate, so it doesn't really matter. If you're not really convinced, then you can actually set it to um, 0 0.9999, whatever the value you want, uh, or um, you can actually set it to um, 0 0.98. Um, it depends on what you want. I mean, if you want like little more um, delay sensitive, um, you, if, if you don't want to actually build up the uh, the queue, then probably uh, 9.8 um, or um, 0 0.98 or 0 0.97 might, uh, might be a good value. So what is the epoch? Um, I actually set the epoch to the min, uh, minimum RTT uh, in the code. Um, then uh, the target RTT deciding factor, um, K, is actually, um, has to be greater than four, but I don't know what, what the good value should be. I mean, in normal, uh, in normal situation, probably four is actually the best because um, for personal use of your computer, I mean, you don't really need to actually get uh, get uh, use like you know 100% of your uh, you know bandwidth. So probably mean um, your target RTT should be the mean RTT. Um, setting the target RTT to mean RTT should actually do. But uh, if you really want to uh, optimize like you know throughput, then you might want to actually build up the queue a little more, and that's actually a tricky problem too. And also uh, this reduced PI parameter uh, beta. Um, the range is basically uh, greater than zero and uh, less than one, but um, you know, how do I actually come up with this uh, you know, value is actually another um, a hard problem to solve. It's not that hard, but it's uh, harder than um, gamma or um, delta. <clears throat> so um, Basically, uh, in PI controller, um, PI controller is uh, is kind of sensitive to RTT. Uh, if RTT actually grow, then the system um, may uh, you know go into um, what do you call it, like you know unstable condition where they have a lot of like you know um, what is it, the bandwidth and the queuing delay actually swinging. So you really need to actually make sure the uh, you know the uh, the beta value is actually. Um, right for um, the environment. Um, so uh, there are there are two um, methods that you can actually use. You can actually use the fre uh, frequency um, uh, response analysis. Um, uh, basically, you just need to model um, this simple algorithm and uh, add the uh, the delay component to it, and then just do the um, both um, frequency uh, response analysis to actually come up with what would be the uh, the safe range of uh, you know beta. Actually, it's beta beta over um, delta, but you know, since you actually set the del uh, delta to mean RDT, you, that's how you can actually come up with. Or um, can we actually come up with uh, you know uh, uh, um, the the right value empirically um, using a learning algorithm? That was uh, what our focus was on. So. Basically, uh, we want to actually read the, uh, the per flow statistics from the TCP stack, give it to the learning agent in a user space, and that user space will actually um, uh, slowly uh, you know, investigate the, uh, the TCP performance and uh, reconfigure the, uh, uh, what is it, the, the configure um, the, um, the module parameter for uh, the BBRX. So um, we actually wanted to go to that direction, so we evaluated this. Okay, um, <clears throat> so so the learning agent, well, what it does is actually, uh, it actually subscribes to the TCP flow stat via Netlink socket. So basically whenever um, the TCP terminates, um, we actually um, getting the TCP stats, I mean, it's actually shown on the right side, um, um, you know, get this information. And basically um, then what we do is we classify the TCP flows into different bins based on the reported bottleneck bandwidth and the minimum RTT because 
we can we could actually use one class for uh, testing, and then um, we actually decided to use um, uh, multiple bins uh, because that might actually work better. Um, and for each class traffic class bin, uh, we compute the average utility uh, of flows um, when enough samples are collected. Um, basically, the default was actually 40, but you know, basically, uh, when when we actually get the um, the flow samples, then we compute the uh, average utility. And um, and basically um, using the PCC, we just saw uh, Vivace, and then what was the Alle Allegro or something? Yeah, we actually used the Allegro um, utility function to compute the um, um, the utility uh, for um, for uh, those flows, average of those flows, and then uh, we um, then basically it becomes like find uh, a problem, optimization problem of uh, finding minimum k and the corresponding uh, beta that yields the highest utility, average utility. So that's how uh, we actually approached. And basically, um, uh, the learning agent is uh, you know, updating the BBRX kernel module parameters. <coughs> so, but this actually, um, um, we, we really need to actually make sure that in order to actually um, use the learning algorithm, uh, gradient actually descendant, but in this case ascendant, because the shapes are actually, you know, um, the other way around. Uh, we, we, we need to actually make sure that this is actually a convex function. Otherwise, uh, we can't really apply the gradient ascendant algorithm on it. So, so we did some tests. Um, so we actually, um, this, um, this graph actually shows the utility um, of, in terms of, so we, we increase the, um, the x-axis is actually beta. It's actually 100 times beta. And um, we um, um, we actually uh, what is it um, the Q length? I mean, we actually increase the Q length of the bottleneck bandwidth uh, of the bottleneck link, and then you know um, plot the uh, the utility value we actually came up uh, uh, we actually saw. So um, the so I forget like you know what was the bandwidth available? Um, yeah. I think I forget to actually you know, put that information here, but anyway, um, so, so the thing is, it actually shows the convex function, uh, which is actually good. So BBR, X actually becomes the BBR for small beta. Um, we actually tested with a zero, beta equals to 0 0.01, which is actually um, one in this graph. And uh, basically, and yield a, a, a lower uh, flow utility due to uh, overflows as bottleneck uh, buffer size is actually reduced. Okay, um, so that's actually one observation that we actually made from this graph. Um, and also, the, th the other thing is uh, for a large beta beyond the uh, optimal value, which it seems like you know 0 0.6 in this case, um, it, the, uh, the, the decrease the utility uh, due to uh, control insta instability. Basically, we actually observe a large magnitude of uh, side on. Uh, uh, <coughs> So sign pattern um, of the high queuing delay followed by the uh, link, uh, link generalization and that once it actually go over. So we are actually reacting too fast, basically. That's what it means. Uh, if that's the case, we will actually have uh, you know, um, less utility. So, um, but the good thing is um, the system has wide range of stable uh, beta range. Uh, in this case, about 0.2 to 0.6, providing a large margin of configuration freedom. And that we thought was actually, you know, pretty cool thing. Okay, uh, so <coughs> this actually shows the same uh, utility versus like, you know, beta uh, for uh, different bandwidth. So we actually increased the bandwidth, um, you know, to 15, uh, 50 megabps to 35 megabps to 75 megabps. And then test with like you know different RTTs this time, so we also increase the uh, the RTT from 25 millisecond to 175 millisecond and see how the shape changes. Um, so uh, interesting thing is, uh, as expected, uh, when the RTT is low, it's pretty flat. Um, if RTT uh, is getting larger and larger, um, the sweet spot is actually uh, moving to the left side and also um, getting narrower. So that was what we actually figure out. So basically, um, even though um, it's okay to maybe set it up to 45, 
um, you know, 0.45 or uh, 0.5, uh, you know, beta 2, that will probably work uh, well on most of the cases. If you really want to, um, um, you know, uh, configure the, uh, the beta right for uh, your environment, then basically um, we actually uh, uh, concluded that you, you need, uh, you know, multiple um, configuration of the beta um, uh, according to the, uh, the capacity and delay of the system, okay? So, um, <clears throat> so we, um, that's, that's the reason why we, uh, we actually proposed a network condition-based configuration approach. Um, and uh, BBRX sender start with the default parameter, um, which is actually set to beta equals to 0.45, K equals to four, and BBRX sender refers to the table, you know, when entering the, um, the probe bandwidth state. Basically, you know, probe bandwidth state is actually happening every eight RTT, right? Um, I think the, uh, you know, it goes to the probing RTT, uh, you know, um, go for the, uh, the bandwidth um, check, um, more bandwidth check um, every eight RTT, I believe. So um, that's when um, this table is actually looked up again to see if there is, uh, you know, um, parameter change. Most likely, there won't be a parameter change for the lifetime of the, um, um, uh, the flow, but um, in mobile world, um, where um, if you are actually driving, then um, it's possible that uh, the, the network condition changes, and maybe um, you might need to actually change the beta value to optimize it further. <clears throat> okay, so um, and the learning agent um, daemon is actually updating each bin separately. Basically, you know, it, once you actually get the uh, enough sample, then it just uh, do the gradient uh, ascendant and then see if uh, you know a better beta or the uh, better k can actually be uh, you know, found. Okay, so basically that's um, that's basically the mechanism. Um, so it's a little bit shameful that I was not able to uh, evaluate very thoroughly. So I'm going to actually uh, you know give you um, the preliminary um, evaluation result. So. So this, the first case is uh, the general purpose configuration. My first goal is delay and then good put. So if that is the, uh, the case, um, I, I, hold on one second, before, uh, so that's basically what I wanted to achieve. So um, this actually shows you the, um, the emulation topology. Um, you know, I have a host with, um, you know, two uh, iperf um, one one iperf server and one, uh, one uh, iperf client running. The client is actually pumping data to the server, so I actually set up a um, um, an emulation network um, like this, and then um, I actually set the um, um, NetEM and um, token bucket filter on the VETH. Um, and uh, you don't really need to do this, but um, I actually uh, installed the uh, the NetEM on the um, the container side to give, in this case, 25 milliseconds. So I, I actually divided the, uh, the 25 milliseconds into two, uh, 12 milliseconds and then 13 milliseconds just to, just to make uh, as close to um, uh, the real environment. But I don't think it's really needed. But anyway, so that's the, um, the emulation topology that I used. Okay, so, um, so um, since you are, um, in, in normal case, if I'm actually targeting to have minimum delay, basically I don't want any queuing delay um, at the, um, what is it, the congested, uh, you know, bottleneck point. Because once, uh, you know, the queuing delay is actually, you know, you have a consistent queuing delay, then um, it's actually very tricky. Because remember, we actually used the, uh, you know, um, R0, which is actually a minimum RTT to um, do, to compute like, you know, um, uh, what is it? And, and, and a lot of like control is based on the, uh, no, the R0. So once the, uh, the, the queuing delay is growing up in the bottleneck routers, um, BBR control might be actually off. And that is one, uh, you know, one of the reason I believe, um, you know, that actually caused some, um, or is it unfairness and stuff like that. So basically, what the, the first goal here is, I don't want any queuing delay, and in this case, I would actually set the, uh, the k equals to four, and gamma equals uh, uh, 0.98, or even maybe 0.95, uh, 
0.95. So um, I actually did the test, um, you know, using uh, 0.98 and uh, k equals to four. And um, the network, um, sorry, this is not 10 megabps is an error. Uh, it's actually 100 megabps. Yep, it was 100 megabps. So, whoops. So it was 100 megabps, um, and the um, the round trip time of uh, the system was 25 milliseconds, and then the queue length I set to 132 milliseconds. And then run Cubic, run BBR, and uh, run uh, BBRX. Um, so uh, the bandwidth utilize, uh, the if you look at the uh, the link utilization, uh, no, the bandwidth, um, the throughput basically, um, the Cubic was 88.6, um, the BBR was actually doing better, 94.6, and um, the BBRX was actually, uh, with this configuration, was actually doing uh, slightly, um, you know, lower than um, uh, BBR, 92.9 megabps. Okay, so this um, actually shows the um, the outstanding window um, and the RTT of the cubic. So as expected, um, if you actually you know work on congestion control, the leftmost graph is is very you should be very familiar with it. Um, and then the BBR is actually in the middle. Uh, as you can see, um, BBR is actually you know doing the good job at like you know staying at the um, or is it the bandwidth um, bottleneck bandwidth um, uh, sending at the bottleneck bandwidth, but the Q was actually going up and down um, to I think 80 80 millisecond and going down and stuff like that. Uh, if you look at the uh, the BBRX, um, basically um, the Q uh, was just oscillate, oscillating uh, around the um, uh, the path RTT, and um, so basically this is the um, um, the the test with one flow, and okay, so basically what this actually shows is a BBR control function is actually a BBRX control function is actually achieving what it's trying to do, um, but is it going to be true for multiple flows? So um, I actually did uh, increase the number of flow to four. Um, and then, um, you know, look at the same thing. So, um, basically, um, uh, so if you actually look at the BBRX, uh, the RTT, the RTT is still, um, you know, around the, um, the system uh, RTT. And if you look at all four flows of RTTs, uh, I just look at the all four flows of uh, the RTT, um, they were actually staying very low. So it seems like uh, you know BBRX is actually doing what it's supposed to do. I mean, I'm not really saying that uh, I can't really conclude right now, but um, uh, you know I really need to actually do a little more test on it. But um, as of now, it seems pretty promising. Okay, so um, the next thing is um, if I really want to actually configure um, the BBRX to uh, achieve good put first. And then um, delay. Then um, basically uh, the things that we uh, we actually introduced, like you know, using the uh, the learning agent and all that thing, will be probably needed because we don't know which k value greater than four will be the um, the uh, will be the best k value for to actually achieve the good put, uh, but minimize the delay. Okay, so. Um, I haven't actually showed that here, but I actually set the um, the k equals to six. In this case, gamma equals to one. I uh, set to one, and then you know k equals to six. Then uh, in another um, run, I actually set the um, the k equals to eight. Um, uh, in this graph, what I would like to actually show is uh, how the uh, the queuing delay. I mean the uh, the RTT is actually oscillating. So um, basically, if you actually read the um, uh, the average RTT. Um, when the uh, the K was set to six, which means like 1.5 of our uh, mean RTT, it was it was about 32 or somewhere, 37 or somewhere. And then when I actually uh, set the uh, the K equals to eight, the Q, uh, the delay, the RTT was actually oscillating oscillating around uh, 50 millisecond, um, where the um, uh, the system RTT was set to 25 millisecond. So it seems like the control uh, is actually working well. So um, then uh, we actually bring this to uh, the real world. 
So um, uh, we actually uh, we uh, installed the uh, the BBRX into uh, one of our server in Texas, um, and um, you know uh, did the 100 megabyte uh, megabyte file download, and then uh, basically just compare it with um, BBR and BBRX. Um, in this case, uh, we actually set the uh, the gamma equals to one and k equals to six, meaning like 1.5 of the mean RTT. Um, so um, we really need uh, more time to actually evaluate this, but it seems like the BBRX is actually you know working pretty well, um, and um, it was able to uh, reduce the um, you know uh, manage the RTT in the range that we want and. Um, for some reason, I don't I, I don't know if this is this particular run or not, but you know um, it was actually finishing earlier than uh, BBR because BBR uh, was actually timing out in the first like two to three seconds. Um, it actually uh, pushed too much and then it got uh, RTO. Um, but uh, it seems like this uh, mechanism would be a, a good candidate to play with for um, wireless network. Okay, by the way, um, we actually tested this um, in a good RF condition, okay, which is SINR, um, signal, um, SINR R of uh, 25 dB or larger, okay? Okay, so summary. Um, so uh, BBRX, we introduced the PI control function to BBR. Um, we Export the uh, the per flow uh, TCP stats to user space, uh, you know, via uh, Netlink socket, and the uh, the learning agent is um, it actually adopts a utility function to uh, score average TCP uh, CA uh, performance and adjust the uh, the BBRX control parameter to yield the best utility while keeping the um, the RTT to the minimum. Um, so this is actually uh, loosely coupled, like you know, TCP tuning feedback control loop. Uh, provide uh, this control loop actually provides a novel way, we think, to actually monitor and adjust the uh, TCP parameter per the performance goal in real time, while minimizing the risk of deploying the pre-tuned learning algorithm in the fast path. Wow, this is uh, long, but I think this is what we are trying to achieve and. Um, okay, so current status. So uh, preliminary evaluation um, uh, result look good. Um, the BBRX reduces the shallow buffer overflow. We actually tested that as well, um, even though we actually didn't show it here. Um, and customize the, uh, the TCP performance, the LTE. Um, uh, that approach looks pretty promising. Um, and um, we actually proposed the kernel patch um, to get the TCP congestion control information via Netlink socket on flow termination event. Um, that was not there, so um, actually Jamal um, is in process of uh, you know um, you know sub submitting the patch. And uh, BBRX and TC uh, TCP stat collector code is available at um, the GitHub location. I just put it up today. Okay, um, so future work, uh, more evaluation. Um, and then, um, and I would really love to evaluate the fairness among BBRX flow. I mean, I don't really want to spend more time on like uh, evaluating BBRX uh, versus cubic because it's two different mechanisms uh, going for two different goals and I don't think it's gonna achieve the, um, the fairness. I mean, depends on what, how you define the fairness, however, um, BBRX may actually do a little better in terms of fairness because because of this, uh, you know, reacting to the uh, you know, queuing delay, um, it may actually um, have better chance by, you know, from the, um, uh, what is it, the um, uh, game theory perspective, if, if you are trying to play a game to win and everybody is like, doing that, then that actually gives, like, you know, better performance and better fairness performance. However, um, what we actually did uh, saw was BBR was actually too um, not aggressive. It's once it actually you know uh, uh, estimate the bandwidth is actually stay with that uh, you know stay with the bandwidth, and only uh, one at one out of uh, eighth RTT is just pro for the bandwidth. So if you're just doing a little more um, frequent like you know uh, bandwidth adjustment uh, based on the Q length RTT grow and less, that might actually you know. Uh, impact of fairness a little bit. So um, that is another future work that I would like to see. Um, the, and also, um, 
evaluate the PI control function uh, variations such as one used in ABC. ABC is very similar, but um, what it does is um, it actually reduces the, um, uh, the uh, transmission rate, the bandwidth, uh, the target bandwidth, but it doesn't actually increase. When the uh, PI control says increase it, it doesn't increase, but it only uh, decreases. I mean, it, probably they have their own reason because they want to actually minimize the RTT, uh, uh, not the RTT, uh, the queuing delay, and therefore I think this is another uh, good variation to actually test with, um, uh, with BBRX. Okay. Any questions? Um, I had a quick question about um, how you envisioned this coexisting with Cubic or Reno, or are you imagining this is just targeting at scenarios like a cellular operator who might terminate TCP connections and, and know that all of the traffic on their network was this flavor of BBR or something? I mean, um, yeah, I mean, that's actually a tough question. So uh, in the, uh, the PEP word, I think it works great. Um, if you really want to actually make this to uh, be used in public, uh, I think we need to actually look at it, but um, I, I don't think the, uh, the goal should be uh, having the equal bandwidth allocation uh, with Cubic. Um, I don't think it can be achievable uh, because it's two different mechanisms. However, um, if, if it's not really starving the, uh, the Cubic, I think that should be fine. Um, that's my opinion only, but. Yeah, I guess my concern was more in the direction of it seems like if uh, if this algorithm would run coexisting with Reno or Cubic, then the Reno or Cubic would continue to grow the queue, oh, and, okay. and this would back off um, and eventually have nothing like uh, Vegas or uh, Lola, I guess. Yeah. That, so uh, yeah, I mean, it's still I, I think that's still a concern because um, this uh, mechanism will actually. Um, so the cubic is going to actually increase the queuing delay, and then this guy right. is actually backing up. So um, in this case, uh, probably um, the BBRX will actually have um, low bandwidth allocation. Okay. Than but it cubic. does sound like this is targeted more at, at cellular operators who might happen to know that they control all the... The right. congestion control algorithms on their network, is that right? Right. Okay. So it's anyway per device queue, uh, and we don't really have too many flows per device, I mean, concurrently happening. Um, so this would be a, you know, a very good uh, you know, mechanism to consider. Hi. Uh, very interesting work. Uh, definitely want to look at the patches on your GitHub. Um, um, in one of your graph, I think it was the sec sir, last slide, um, that I noticed, uh, oh yeah, this one. So the left one, uh, so uh, at the one period between second two to three, BBR was ramping up like nuts while BBRX was doing the exact opposite. Any insight why they are going in <laughs> complete different directions? Um, not really. At this point, I can't really uh, give you. So, so what is the question? Can you actually point out again? So, how come like uh, between second two to three, uh, BBR ramps um, up to you know like basically? Doubles. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, so this is um, a little tricky, but you know basically at when R uh, when RQ actually happens, this is actually uh, measured uh, by the uh, looking at the X. So the uh, the RTT goes up. But um, if so, uh, the BBRX was actually um, going into draining phase, and therefore it was actually going down. So if you, so, basically it was it was lucky that it didn't actually cause the, uh, the RTO, and then it actually went to the uh, draining phase to the um, um, uh, what is it the uh, the normal uh, phase. That I believe is what's happening here. Okay, so the in-fly that comes down from the cliff uh, is the, 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 no, the no stive of the in-fly is because of the draining. Yeah. And BBRX did not do the draining because for BBRX, it's actually, it went down first and then came back up. Or BBRX did the draining. BBRX is also doing the draining. So that logic is exactly the same, but okay. even draining phase, I'm at, we are actually um, adjusting based on, uh, no, the bandwidth based on the queuing delay. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I, I really have to actually look into, uh, uh, look more detail into it, but 
Um, that's basically what it's doing. So the amount of code that I, I the, the code that I just showed you is uh -huh. the um, the only um, the logical change to the BBR. Okay. Yeah, if you have traces that you can show us, I'm happy to look at the BBR one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I guess a quick guess would be perhaps that the Owen calculation didn't account for SACs. So I've seen this in uh, TCP trace, for example. I think we'll think that the outstanding window is actually twice what it is because half of that is actually sacked. Um, so that might be what's happening here is that basically the BBRX sees that the delay is growing mm. and it drains just in time to avoid loss or as BBR starts taking losses, sees a bunch of stuff sacked and maybe this number in doesn't take account of the sacks and so it, the BBR looks like it's twice what it ought to be or something. That's one, th one possibility. Anyway. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Jay. Thank you.